All right, we're so glad everybody has joined us. So here we are, Emma and I, excited to be in the kitchen mm -hmm. on Eastwood here in Mississippi. We're going to share a PowerPoint and then um, share some fun things that we love to use in our um, just daily practice and nourishment. So I'm going to share a few concepts about just overall wellness and then go to the um, just tips about nutrition. So one thing that we really like to focus on is just the importance of overall wellness. So it's this balance of how are we eating, but also are we hydrating, also moving our bodies and de-stressing. Um, another part of that is just getting out in the sun and enjoying just that wonderful vitamin D and a natural source. So quickly talking about hydration, um, people ask about, you know, how much water should I drink a day? And one real easy equation is just taking your body weight and dividing that in half. And then mm -hmm. that gives the quantity that's an average amount per day for a person to consume. If you're in a hot climate, if you're exercising, sweating more, then you need to increase that amount. Um, we think it's fun for you to eat and drink your fruits and veggies. And so what we mean by that is you can blend and do other things besides just, um, you know, drinking fruit juices. Um, these are some real high volume liquid foods, cucumbers, watermelon, pineapple, lettuce, blueberries, celery, cantaloupe, grapefruit. Um, so when we, you're thinking about, I need to hydrate, you don't always have to think about getting it just purely from your water source that Emma's going to take an example right now and take, take a drink. Um, so infused water. So she's drinking hers. I've got some here. And this has got um, pineapple chunks in it. And so it's really fun to be able to hydrate through um, just drinking water, but also making it taste a lot yummier. And so doing things like this, um, adding mint and citrus. And then if you want to sweeten it a little bit, uh, we recommend just honey, more natural sources, maple syrup, stevia, that um, are good ways. Mm -hmm. And then um, another thing to think about is um, nut milks. If you're not accustomed to those, um, I know that there's more allergic reactions happening today with people having different concerns with dairy, different concerns with gluten, um, nut intolerances. So if you don't have a nut allergy, you can go to a nut milk source for your liquid. Um, hemp obviously doesn't usually cause a nut allergy. Rice doesn't as well. Um, coconut sometimes doesn't uh, either. So that, those are some good cho choices for options. And then pH balance. That's just something to know about in our body. We naturally need to be slightly on the alkaline side to make sure our body is just staying more whole and healthy. If the pH balance in our body is too acidic, then that means that we're more of a environment for different kinds of illness and sickness and disease. So if we have our body slightly on the alkaline level, and alkaline foods are fruits and veggies. So if you're consuming those, that's going to help you to get more towards the alkaline side, the acidic side or the processed foods, um, the processed, you know, drinks and colas, sodas, um, things that tend to increase the acidic level. So if you can balance it out a little bit and get some of the good nutrients in your body, that's going to help your body to have a better balance. So I love the scripture. Um, and God said, behold, that I have given you every herb yielding seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which the fruit of a tree yielding seed, it's for us, it's for our food. And just to understand that God really intended for us to eat a lot of plants. And that was the original intent. And I believe he still blesses us when we eat a lot of plants today. And so we're going to talk quite a bit about the inclusion of plant foods, plant consumption. So the motto really is just eat real food. And the real food is food that you recognize, what you can see, where it came from. Um, so many things that we might buy that are coming in a package source, process source. We don't even know how to read the ingredients and often our bodies don't know what they are either. So if it can come as close to the real original source as possible, I think that's awesome. Um, another part about that, it's so gorgeous. It's just beautiful. God's provisions through all the plant colors, 
And I know my mom and aunt are on the line and mom's been telling me they've just been going to the market and just eating plant foods mm -hmm. um, for the last few days and just cooking a lot of fruits and, um, and lots of vegetables. And so way to go, mama, way to go, Auntie Judy. Appreciate that representing so well. So coloring our plate, um, there's this concept mm -hmm. of eating every color of the rainbow and why that's so important is this. When we're eating whole food plant sources, um, red foods, they have a really good job that they do in our body to help reduce the risk of heart disease. Um, the orange foods help to promote our proper eye health and skin health. Um, green foods, they help digestion, boost our immune system. They're loaded with lots of good nutrients to build strong bones. Um, the purple foods, as I'm growing a little older, I want to keep eating a little bit more because they're helpful for anti-aging and anti-inflammation in our body. And then the white foods help to lower our cholesterol and many other benefits as well. So if you're not eating the whole spectrum every day, every color every day, then your body is not getting what it needs. It's getting only partially what it needs. So we're gonna talk a bit about veggies. Um, what we're gonna do is just go through this PowerPoint, show you a bunch of images of foods that we create generally and then we're going to stop the PowerPoint and just talk about some of these options and ways to change things up a bit. Mm -hmm. So this is what um, one image of the cart. That really was my cart the last time I went grocery shopping. I had a bunch of plant foods in my cart. And as I um, kept loading them in there and I thought, wow, this is really beautiful. I need to take a picture. And so here you go. Um, so lots and lots of plants makes a big difference in your body as we were talking about. And so that's a real true image of my cart. Um, we like to talk about prepping in advance. And so we'll share more about that, but you can just see a bunch of chopped up vegetables. It sure helps you in the preparation for later because if it's prepared in advance, then you're able to not spend so much time each day to try to figure out what am I gonna eat and it's already done. So we really mm -hmm. encourage like this bulk chopping and prepping. Um, here's little individual bowls. I think these were for a night when we did, um, it was a faux, I yes. think, um, um, an Asian noodle dish. And so everybody could add their own um, ingredients in to change it up as they wish. Roasting veggies, we'll show you that in just a minute, but we love this process because it sure helps to make sure you're getting a variety of all these gorgeous colors. So this is something that I've, um, we've roasted recently and I sprinkled on one of them was a um, um, Trader Joe's chili lime powder just to give it that kind of Hispanic flavoring. And then the other one um, was a more herb, variety of herb in a all seasoning. And I'll pull that out and show you in just a few minutes. Um, and then, having leafy green veggies available that's really great this one image that's down on the corner that's a little bit darker that's roasted kale so we just took kale slightly um, rubbed it with some olive oil and sometimes i don't even use oil um, and put it in the oven and roasted it and it just turns crisp and with a little salt it's really really yummy so keeping greens on hand is wonderful so you have accessibility um, here's a bunch of um, veggies that have been roasted and it's a mix of some of the roasted veg that you saw on that platter as well as some um, whole tomatoes that are fresh. There's some potatoes in there as well. Um, here's some others that are just all pure veggies that haven't been roasted. So raw mm -hmm. is great. Um, we do talk about raw when you are eating your consumption of foods it's really good to eat at least 51%, just over half of your vegetables raw, because then you're going to get all of those enzymes and nutrients in their original source. Sometimes when we're cooking them, when we're boiling them in the pot, what ends up happening is you're cooking out a lot of the nutrients. So if you've ever seen like green beans and you cook it in a pot with like fat back or something like that, that's how I grew up. Um, that was how it was served. And then when you start dipping everything out of the pot, well, the water is green and it's because so many of those nutrients have remained in the pot. So if you make soup out of that, then that's great. You're going to be able to continue to eat those nutrients, but it's really better to do a steaming or um, a roasting. Like we'll show you some of the things that, that we've done. 
um, beans, lentils, legumes, those are incredible. Another base source for us. So a bunch of vegetables, raw um, and roasted, these different types of proteins through beans, lentils, and legumes. And so just a variety. There's times when we will make um, just a lentil, a lentil soup of just plain lentils to have to add to different types of dishes. Um, the small little round ones and the bottom that are kind of um, unfocused, unfocused, those are chickpeas. And I love chickpeas because they have such a variety in ways that you can prepare them. And we'll show you that again in a moment as well. Um, so here's some beans on um, wonderful, just little soft tacos. And um, so it's just loaded with lots of nutrients and loaded with lots of protein. Um, here's something that's really fun that you can do. It's called a salad in a jar. And so you can do some preparation of planning ahead and making a few meals in advance. And you just can, you know, put your wet ingredients at the bottom. And as you move up, up the ingredients get more and more dry where you can put your lettuce and your greens on top. And so when it comes time to eat it the next day, that's right, you shake it. <laughs> shake it and you can eat it right out of there or you turn it upside down and then it's a salad because the lettuce is on the bottom and all those ingredients are on top. So salad in a jar is a lot of fun and a great way to get extra um, plant foods in your diet. This is a salad that we made that um, had a homemade um, um, Caesar dressing and it was red because I chose to use an olive instead of the um, anchovy. anchovy. And so it just made it a different color and still had that, um, you know, little tangy bite to it. So it's why it turned out like a pink color. So it didn't look too tra traditional, but it tasted great. And then those are roasted chickpeas on top. So after the chickpeas had been cooked, put them in the mm -hmm. oven. And what are some of the flavors you like on chickpeas? You can do salt, mm -hmm. um, pepper, paprika. I feel like a little bit of the spice on mine sometimes. Yeah. So you can just make a variety of how you how you prepare them. Um, pastas is another thing that we really like. This is my favorite brand that is, if you're going to go gluten-free, because this one tends to stay soft even after it has been cooled. Sometimes with some of the pastas that are gluten-free version, they tend to get a little hard mm -hmm. and it's, unless you reheat them, then you're not going to get it back to that really, you know, um, pliable kind of moist, um, more um, flexible kind of texture that you might like to eat. So this is my favorite brand that I really like, and it comes in a different type, different types of pasta, and not just the penne. And I like it too because it's gluten free and it's non GMO. So that's something to think about as you are consuming these foods. If you can get things that are organic, I know it's more expensive in some cases, but you will have an, um, an option that's gonna be a bit more clean for yourself. Um, Non-genetic modified, non-GMO, it's another good choice to make. And then um, just something I'll say quickly about when you're choosing your fruits and veggies and which ones to choose. So we've got apples over here, like bananas, for example. Um, those, if you don't buy them organic, which we tend to buy organic, this would be an okay choice just because it has an outside peel on it and it's more protected. If it is um, something that's more fleshy, like an apple, berries that you're going to eat, the flesh part, then you really want to aim towards get those organic because the pesticides, herbicides have touched the fleshy part that you're going to eat. So that's just something to think about, like avocados. We've got some of those over here. If you're going to eat, you know, melons, things where the outside isn't going to be consumed. So that's just a, a kind of a good school of thought. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so here's pasta, basically that same peanut pasta. What I used for this was some um, actually frozen because it was during this pandemic time when we didn't have access to all of the same fr fresh mm -hmm. vegetables that we're always accustomed to. So I stocked up on some frozen um, peas and stocked up on some frozen broccoli as well. And then used a cream sauce that, um, you know, I can tell you about that right now. So basically just use, um, this? there we go, thanks Emma. So here's cashews, raw cashews. And then this is a um, nutritional yeast, two different kinds of nutritional yeast. And then some salt, garlic, garlic powder, 
And then usually you can use um, a nut milk. So here's two different types of nut milks. I usually try to get organic if I can. And that way with a little pepper, a little lemon juice, you can make a really wonderful Alfredo sauce without um, having to dip into maybe some of the carcinogenic effects that we're getting from some of our dairies and other things that we're finding there. So anyway, that's just a real fun, quick sauce that you can make and you don't have to cook it. You just throw it in the mixer and throw those ingredients in and just blend it and it's ready instantly. And you can just then throw it on top. Yeah. So um, let's do the cashews, what did you use those for to make the, was it with yeah. the sauce? Yeah, so with the sauce, I use, this is the base. So you, oh, okay. So you just like blend it? Yep. Blend the cashews okay. and the nut milk mm -hmm. and the nutritional yeast and the seasoning. And so oh, some fun awesome. with that is mm -hmm. that you can then use um, hot sauce in it to make it like a chipotle sauce. Mm -hmm. Or you can, you know, just change up the flavor of it. So it's really fun. And it's really, you know. So is it kind of in a way like the base? To hold yeah, like you can use yeah. it for so, so that's what you're using kind of as the base for it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's a great base. Great question. All right. And so then here we have just again general um let me do this real quick. Um pen. General um just pasta. And then mm -hmm. this is one that we made that was our own pesto mm -hmm. pasta. And then Emma, really, she makes a great marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. So you want to share, what do you throw in yours when you're putting your tomato base together? Um, I'll normally just do fresh tomatoes, and I'll roast them some. So I like that roasted taste more than not. So I got a little bit of firm taste in my sauce. And then I'll just do handfuls of basil and thyme and oregano and salt and pepper and garlic, and then a little bit of onion and mine. And then every once in a while, I'll do a little bit of honey or something just to give it a little bit of a sweet to pair off with all those strong herb flavors. Yeah, that's great. And then we just will do our own um, pesto. So we grow basil mm -hmm. and then it's real easy to just, you know, get a cluster of that with different types of herbs, olive mm -hmm. oil, if you want some lemon juice, um, salt, pepper, even mm -hmm. um, just really makes it really mm -hmm. yummy. Pine nuts or um, you can use even, um, other nuts like um, um, a cashew or mm -hmm. a um, pecan mm -hmm. to, to change or a walnut to change it up a little bit. So here's more pasta. There's an example of that pasta with fresh herbs and veggies. This was just a mixed mm -hmm. pasta that had a variety of um, just herbs with it and just stirred it up together mm -hmm. and made a real quick, real quick yummy meal. Um, this is another gluten-free pasta, but this one was a red base. So it was a red lentil spaghetti. Mm -hmm. And then this is another one. Emma likes doing these. I don't know if you want to share about making yeah. these. Um, spaghetti squash. A lot of the time I'll do my spaghetti squash and instead of doing just pure spaghetti squash, it's not necessarily my favorite texture all the time by itself. I'll do like half spaghetti squash and then half normal pasta. So you have a mixture of veggies and with your really car like carb heavy meal. So I'll do kind of 50-50 that a lot when I make spaghetti, just so I have more of an equal serving of carving veggies and not just having so much plain pasta. Yeah, it's great. And it's really yummy. And then you can change it up here mm -hmm. so you can see on the plate with that, you did that one with just the, um, the olive oil and garlic and, salt and, and then salt and pepper. And then we threw on top a bunch of really wonderful um, veggies that we had roasted. Yeah. Um, so this is polenta. It's maybe a little challenging to see, but these little clusters right here are polenta. So a, um, a corn base meal mm -hmm. that you can cook it and um, then prepare it similarly to like a pasta to put a sauce on top. Mm -hmm. And then the other one over on the plate was actually a green pasta that I made. Everything was a green base mm -hmm. to an all gluten-free pasta. So instead of a red sauce, I blended up some green tomatoes and did a Alfredo sauce. So it turned out green. So it makes it a little venturesome. You might not, not always think that, oh, wow, I want to eat green food, but it was good. <laughs> it was really good. Um, tomato potatoes. That's another thing that we love a lot. This is a sweet potato that is loaded, as you can see, with black beans, a different sweet, um, corn relish, mm -hmm. um, avocado, and that sauce that we talked mm -hmm. about, that was the white sauce that was put on top to give it a kind of a cheesy flavor, and then some fresh um, green um, diced um, spring onions. 
Um, potatoes, again, love potatoes. Mm -hmm. um, those are hash browns. And then what you see over here, right below it, is the, um, the um, um, tofu scramble. And so mm -hmm. instead of having a scrambled um, egg. egg. It's a mixture with a tofu scramble and often we like to put curry with that and it's really delicious. And then the other one over here is um, just a roasted potato and then tofu again with a, um, a green spinach base. And um, you're getting in lots of proteins, lots mm -hmm. of nutrients, lots of fun colors. And we had a couple of days ago mm -hmm. was National French Friday. So we took um, advantage of all the festivities and um, participated and had everybody in the kitchen and the guys were chopping up and it was a good time together. So we made um, sweet potato fries with chili and that queso with a um, hot sauce in it and then also made a garlic herb fry with some of that queso. So it was a good way to get a fun meal, colorful meal mm -hmm. and also just you know some variety mm -hmm. to change it up. Um, often we can do things like that. You'll see the um, potatoes over on the left with all those herbs. I got those out of my garden and I'll share, share with you about that in just a minute. Um, but that I um, um, spread on that with um, just some water in a base that was a um, bouillon. Mm -hmm. So it was a veggie bouillon. So that was a really good way to go oil free and to be able to still have lots of flavor and lots mm -hmm. of seasoning on those fries. So you can see in the picture there, they turned out crisp. They still had that um, wonderful crunchy texture. Um, so again, more potatoes. Those are just red roasted potatoes with a bunch What's of- What's your trick for keeping them crisp? Yeah, you just put them, yeah, you put them in the oven, you cook them, and then you put your broiler on at the mm -hmm. end and you just turn them and that'll okay. just, that'll make them crisp, crisp them up. Yeah. Rice, we love rice too. Mm -hmm. Here's a couple of pineapple fried rice mm -hmm. um, dishes that we've made recently using brown rice. Um, even a wild rice is mm -hmm. really good. I know traditionally in some cultures, it's more the white rice. Um, I like the brown because it's a little bit more hearty, chewy and dense mm -hmm. and just has a, you know, a weighty texture as you're eating mm -hmm. it and making it. That's just another little bowl of, um, um, rice that is a pineapple fried rice and we love pineapples. I always have usually a couple on hands. Just, <laughs> just always have pineapples around. I love um, cooking with them and putting them in a lot of different things. Um, just a real simple rice with the green. So you can do a spinach, you could do a kale. This is a sweet pea mm -hmm. um, over on the one side and then the other one was just a curry veggie mm -hmm. rice. So it's a really a good base grain to have. And then a um, a southwestern scramble um, or mixture of rice with tomatoes and then black beans. Mm -hmm. And so lots of color. I just love it. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of gorgeous color. Um, and then this was a mixed grain um, wild rice with roasted veggies and um, a grilled mm -hmm. um, tofu. So it was something that still packed with lots of good nutrients. Quinoa. Some people wonder what in the world is quinoa. So it's a good ancient grain. I believe it's um, history is in Native American history, South American. South American. And you can just do a lot with it. Sometimes people don't love the taste of just quinoa plain. But obviously, here's my bowl that we made. And it didn't stay like that. I mixed it all mm -hmm. up together. And so then you're getting that blend of all of those flavors mm -hmm. and textures together. Um, you can use that quinoa in with something else. So this was a um, ground um, um, tofu that I put quinoa in as well to make wraps. So it had an Asian um, sauce on it. And so it was really a fun, yummy wrap, mm -hmm. but mix it in with that high protein dense mm -hmm. um, quinoa. Um, this is a quinoa mixture. So basically um, I made veggie burgers out of it with and oat and quinoa, black beans and mm -hmm. onions to, and carrots to give a real fun um, veggie burger base. And so this was a, um, really, it was delicious. Uh, as I was getting this PowerPoint put together, I was like, oh gosh, I need to make these again. <laughs> Cause they were delicious. And, um, and I like barbecue flavor on things. I'm a yeah. barbecue yeah. gal too. Um, and then these were a um, like a meatball substitute, but it was all a grain cluster. 
that I baked. And so it had a different texture than a meatball, but putting the barbecue sauce on it, it was definitely very yummy and very satisfying. And then just a couple of weeks ago, we made these um, green zucchini um, little clusters that were um, baked and um, made with cornmeal, as well as you can see the quinoa and grains and um, didn't deep fry them, but baked them. So again, a lot of baking, not a lot of frying, a lot of roasting, not a lot of um, you know, cooking in a big deep pot with water. So just trying to keep it um, as pure as possible. And then just quickly here, this was a um, blue cornmeal and that's rosemary. And so just mix that up to make cornbread, but it was a blue herb cornbread. And, um, this is um, another herb cornbread, but also had some gluten-free flour that I made in a veggie burger. And then this was just a, an herb um, corn and regular type of bread. And it just, you know, loaded with avocado. We really like avocado toast with getting good nutrition, good fats, and making sure that you're having, you know, really yummy variety of um, your fats and changing that up. And this is, I think Emma ate this either this morning or yesterday morning, had yes. avocado toast. So it's something that's, that she's really enjoying a lot. What's, what's your best recommendation for, I always get to like the bread section and it's like hugely overwhelming Yeah, for me. Yeah. I, put a, I don't know if we have any here, but there's ones at Dave's. I think mm -hmm. it's called Dave's. Dave's is but as opposed to certain grains and like you know you go to the options got oh so many grains or you want oat or you want honey and stuff like that and okay i think i've i might have seen it okay yeah i always get overwhelmed by bread honestly yeah, but this is really a good one and basically when you're getting your bread you want to get a bread that says that it's made from whole grain mm -hmm. and not necessarily like a whole wheat base, you want the grains, all of the nuggety grains in it, because then they have- That's what I steer yeah. towards, so at least it's, yeah. okay, I was on yeah. the better track. That's right, yes. that's right. Good, okay, and then this is um, just fun, you know, we have pizza night every so mm -hmm. often, so this is one that I made, it was a gluten-free one, and just had a, you know, a variety of different types of plants. Um, you can do all kinds of flavors, and then that was actually a gluten-free, dairy-free cheese. Um, there's not many out there that I like, but there's only like one or two that melt and taste good. Um, the rest of them, I think they're really quite processed and are not so good. I'm shaking her head now. Blah. Yeah, they're not so great, some of them, but th this one in particular, and I can pull out the brand mm -hmm. here in just a minute that we use. Um, and then a trick that we use in cooking and baking is this complete powder. And it's something that both Emma and I have a business and we distribute um, through Juice Plus with our Juice Plus franchises. And with this complete powder, reason we love it so much is because it's a clean powder mm -hmm. and it's one that you can take safely for children for all ages. And it's something that is um, low glycemic, so it's not high mm -hmm. in sugar. And it's um, completely dairy free. So we're seeing some of those whey based um, protein powders that are causing some complications. And so we want to keep our cholesterol low. Well, this is a plant based that has zero cholesterol where mm -hmm. your dairy based will often have um, cholesterol mm -hmm. and other um, possible contaminants and things that may not be as clean. Mm -hmm. So the um, idea is like anything is you know, possible yeah. with these, um, especially when you're making your smoothie, the reddish color one that day was um, even just, I think it was last week, it had 27 plants in it, mm -hmm. 27 different plants in my smoothie in the morning that I made for us. And it just was a variety of things. And part of why it's so red is because um, we had beets in it, mm -hmm. because I had cooked beets before and I just put a little bit of beet and it gave it a pop of extra nutrients, but also brightened up the color. Um, and usually use a nut milk mm -hmm. as a base for that. And then with the nut milk base, um, then sometimes I'll throw in a splash of orange juice. Mm -hmm. You can throw in other kinds of liquid. Sometimes I'll just use water. I know mom likes throwing ice in hers as mm -hmm. well, just to make um, even more accessibility to get extra liquid in your inner body. 
Um, but you'll see in this one in the middle, we use avocado at times because that makes it extra creamy. Mm -hmm. And the mango really makes it creamy. That one had kale as well. And then I just put in some extra mm -hmm. um, liquids on top. Um, and then pineapple, I love, love, love pineapple in my smoothie as well. So you can just change them up and do a lot of variety with this mix. Um, and then there's chocolate and vanilla. So in the winter, I usually don't do it so much in the summer when it's as hot, but this is a um, hot chocolate. So it's just using that plant-based um, drink mix and plant-based, um, you know, a, a nut milk. And with that, mixing it up and it's really yummy and it's kind of a guilt-free way to get um, a hot chocolate in you. We also do these real fun nutrition bites that are made with um, oats and a nut butter. Mm -hmm. You can change them, use the chocolate powder, vanilla powder, and then put other things in it. Um, coconut, you can make them lemon, you can make them, you know, different flavors. So mm -hmm. I'll make sure I get a recipe book to everybody so you can have that for both the smoothies and for the different options mm -hmm. and ways to use this. Um, I like the vanilla mix for baking and um, putting it in. This was a nut bread that I made in these little mm -hmm. nut cookies and then putting that extra um, nutrition in from 15 different plants so it's, again, increasing the amount of plants that we're getting in our diet. And then, um, let me see why we're blocked here. There we go. Um, here's chocolate with the chocolate drink mix. And then using an almond flour. I really love cooking with almond flour um, and oats a lot. Sometimes I'll just ground up the oats and um, use that as a base. And then those were gluten-free, dairy-free um, chocolate chips. So you're still getting a lot of the really wonderful flavors, but without some of the um, negative, um, you know, ramifications with high sugar. Um, mm -hmm. I saw it around here a second ago. Um, so I really enjoy, Emma, actually, they brought this one back from Houston. But when I'm cooking using a um, maple syrup instead of regular sugar can help you get even better nutrients and not some of those effects. And then um, this is one of my favorites. So I take a um, plant-based, and it's right in the fridge I can see over there. Um, let me grab it real quick. So plant-based yogurt. So instead of the um, milk yogurt, a dairy yogurt, a plant-based yogurt, and then just taking that complete mix and getting that and putting it in together and just stirring it up. And it's really a wonderful guilt-free breakfast. So I throw in berries and then often I'll throw granola on top mm -hmm. as well. Um, and then here's some of the ingredients plus this vanilla um, mix as well. So it's so versatile what you can do with it to be able to make um, homemade granola mm -hmm. and that's something my husband loves a lot this one you can see it has sliced almonds I'm a real big we're real big nut eaters mm -hmm. nut consumers and so you can change it up the flavors of it but I just put it all um, together usually use honey and maple syrup to mm -hmm. sweeten it a little bit of cinnamon and then um, lay it out on a baking sheet and cook it mm -hmm. and then it's great to you know just have accessible for snacks or for breakfast mm -hmm. um this is a pancake and so when i use the word pancake i do it a little bit more untraditional i mean like a baking pan most all the pancakes i ever mm -hmm. make is are baked and so mm -hmm. we're not having to use so much oil so this one's loaded with different fruits on top and some um some nuts here's some other ones i used a um fresh berries and then put them on the stove top with just a little bit of maple syrup to soften them to make a syrup and then you can take this also and I'll share in just a minute the um the juice plus this is right here is 20 different plant foods that are fruits and so what you can do is just take out the individual little capsules and you can sprinkle it in that and when you take that little capsule and sprinkle it in there then you can just you know open it and you can just add more nutrients plant powders plant powders just getting a lot of good extra nutrients mm -hmm. in your uh, in your um you know in your meal and so that's what these are they're just dehydrated plant powders what they've done in the process is 
to take the whole fruit, the whole vegetable, um, and then they extract out all the liquid. And what you're remaining with is just the essence of the fruit or the vegetable and the full mm -hmm. enzymes, all the nutrients without the, um, without the liquid. So that's another thing I had this here. You can take a jam and take powder and mix it together. And so you're adding extra plants to, um, to what you're eating. Mm -hmm. Go here. Excuse me one second. <coughs> Sorry, talking too much. So just a variety of options of how we can get all these different plants in our diets. And then the omegas, that's the last thing I'll share about um, these solutions and then we'll jump into some of the other um, preps that we do in all of our meal options. Um, so omegas, we really are seeing now the need because of things like Alzheimer's and dementia, ADHD, mm -hmm. ADD, just different kinds of concerns that we're finding in our world today. And especially I think even now with this pandemic mm -hmm. and people are glued to their screens and just not getting what their body needs. And so it's another way to get good nutrients in mm -hmm. from um, you know, a plant-based source. Some people will consume omegas that are a fish base. And the problem we see with that often is they have um, contaminants, they can be um, mercury in the content of them. And so this is just bypassing that and going directly to the algae where the fish get their nutrients to become um, dense with um, their omegas. <coughs> Sorry, I'm talking too much. <coughs> and then lastly here, um, the research behind this. That's why we appreciate it so much. We've seen the improvement in so many areas of people's lives when they're consuming all these plant powders. And we can send you research and information about it to show what it does for gum health, what it does mm -hmm. to boost your immune system, to help with your heart, um, to help reduce inflammation in your body, healthier skin, your DNA, <clears throat> reducing all the stressors that we're experiencing. So it's just, it's a really great way to mm -hmm. help to combat and Again, if you're not getting that whole spectrum of all these fruits and veggies every day, that's a beautiful way. Consuming these plant mm -hmm. powders is an excellent way to make sure you're bridging the gap. <clears throat> all right. And then lastly, one thing that's really a, a lot of fun, the Tower Garden is a garden that has um, something that can be done inside or outside, grown, grow all year round, which I really love because I usually keep mine going all year in, in the winter, just a few days here where it, um, my frost might come. I just take out, go outside and cover it up mm -hmm. um, to make sure it's protected. <clears throat> so they're um, something that you can have inside your house or outside of your house. And there's grow lights. If you're interested in having that, you can grow all year um, around. So this is a picture of mine. And mine is a bit herb heavy because we like a variety of herbs. And this just shows what we did, picked, and then used those herbs on this um, asparagus and carrot mixture. Mm -hmm. So it's really so satisfying for me, both because I love to see things grow. Mm -hmm. But when you sit by it and you listen to the trickling sound, it's very therapeutic. And also, it's fresh. You just can't get any more fresh than going out and clipping something on your own. And then we have something called our Family Health Study, which allows children age four up through college age to get these nutrients for free. So when a parent or a guardian or someone purchases this, for up to four years, a child can have this free, either in this form or here's my husband's form. <laughs> He's the chewable guy. So they come in um, gummies. So that's just a lot of fun to be able to get all of those good nutrients in. And again, it's like having another mm -hmm. guilt-free snack. And what we've found is people who are consuming them, lots of great, amazing reports mm -hmm. that show what happens to their bodies and their cravings and mm -hmm. all of that. Um, so we're going to hop on to this next part, but I just want you to know we're going to send you, if you like, you can mm -hmm. reach out to Emma or me and Facebook mm -hmm. message and we can send you the links to free online cookbooks mm -hmm. loaded with a lot of these things that we're talking about free um, webinars even exercise programs because that's how we started talking about importance of all those aspects mm -hmm. 
And then um, <clears throat> also send you this little booklet that's loaded with a lot of recipes that, that you can use for baking, but also making a lot of fun different types of smoothies. Alrighty, so that's that part. And now you're gonna be um, in our kitchen with us. So here we go. We've got, um, <clears throat> back this up here. So why don't you start, we're gonna pull over a tray. Sure. So this is something that we're talking about that we made just this morning. Here's just a variety. Um, hopefully you can see these just gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? I just think for me, just the color. Yep. And here's another, just a huge amount. So selfishly doing an event like this is a lot of fun because um, we, our dinner's made. We don't have to cook tonight. And then this mushroom and um, spring onions in the middle. And those are carrots. So they're, everything's organic. And the carrots are just fun because they're different colors. We got purple and yellow and orange. So some of the non-traditional colors that are, you know, make things pretty festive. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's some of the things that we do, but I'm gonna let Emma share a bit about what she does when, you know, she's preparing um, for the week. So for you, I know yeah. you were talking about this, um, but go for it. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like we looked at a lot of different recipes and normally how I plan my week is I'll think of like one or two grains that I'll make so it'll either be like potato or rice and I'll start my week and just make a huge pot of rice and then think about whatever different ways I want to change it up throughout my week. So that's a quinoa base or a pasta base, all the bases that we've already talked about and covered. I'll think about one or two of them and then make those at the beginning of my week and keep them separate and then I'll change up the flavor as the week goes on. And so then using different types of things. So right, this is um, a bulk sack of um, chickpeas. Mm -hmm. So I just usually buy in bulk and you'll just see they're all dehydrated here mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> just put them in our instant pot. And within an hour, you can cook them um, put in the liquid that you want, put in mm -hmm. bouillon, put in whatever kind of seasoning you want. And then it's really great because then you have, um, yeah, so you have, like, this is one that I made this week that was um, a carrot hummus. Mm -hmm. So I just blended up carrots. And so what are other flavors you like in your hummus? I'll do red pepper a lot. So I'll do roasted red peppers, like, on a sheet tray. So I really just like that burning kind of pepper taste. And I'll add that to my hummus with my garlic and my salt and my onion. And so you can use that. Um, and you can also do like avocado. Mm -hmm. I've made avocado before or spinach. Mm -hmm. So it changes the color of it, but it also changes the flavor. So mm -hmm. that's a fun thing when we have different events where you'll have your regular color hummus and one that's more red because you used a pepper and another mm -hmm. one that's green. So it just changes it up. Mm -hmm. Sounds a little like Christmas. So um, it's, it's fun and, and yummy. Um, how about, um, so we talked about our grains mm -hmm. and um, any kind of seasoning. So something that you can change up is when you are, <clears throat> you know, the question is like the variety. So maybe yeah. you want to use the brown rice, but what could be different ways you would use the brown rice? Well, I feel like as rice gets older, it gets just crispier and harder to work with. So I'll normally plan to do like my fried rice at the end of the week and something that I re-soften it up and do my like rice and beans or things that I want to soft rice for at the beginning of the week. So really time through. If I start with like a pasta, I'll do that with my marinara sauce. And then as the week goes on, I'll add it to like a pasta salad or something that kind of adds more moisture back to it. And you don't get bored to not eating the same thing every day, all day. Yeah. So it's just using that same base. Um, same thing like with a quinoa that I really like, again, the diversity that we show that you can make a veggie burger out of it, mm -hmm. but you can also use it in bowls. And the other thing I didn't share was, um, I always keep this on hand, is to have a veggie broth. Um, we also use this as well, a type of a veggie, um, bouillon. Bouillon. Let me see if we get out the light. It's a veggie bouillon. And so those are really awesome as bases because you can cut out some of the oil mm -hmm. 
and just use this instead. Mm -hmm. And um, so you can make a quick soup. You've got your grain like a rice or potatoes that you've made or um, a quinoa. Throw that in some veggie bouillon and then throw in your veggies that you already mm -hmm. cooked. And you've got within like two minutes, you can have a soup because mm -hmm. you've already prepared everything. Mm -hmm. So just changing it up, thinking about, you know, salad. That's an, yes. another something that you tell some of the things that you like to do with your salads. Well, because it's like not filling enough for me traditionally just to do an all veggie based salad, but I'll do normally a pretty grain heavy salad with rice or with quinoa or with potatoes as my base and then add my raw lettuce or raw spinach on it because I want to be full for longer than an hour after I eat my salad. I need something heartier to keep me going throughout my day. So I normally do like a 50-50 with quinoa and spinach and then add all of my other veggies on top of that. Yeah, so that's a good base. And so often keeping an organic um, green around we like do a mixed green sometimes spinach this is romaine um and those are really good for those wraps that we mentioned but also just you know for sandwiches and instead of using a um a tortilla we use a quite a bit of those at times um so you can just wrap your um you know your food instead of having it in a tortilla to make a burrito mm -hmm. you could do it a little bit differently and wrap it up like that um, you talk about black beans, having mm -hmm. those accessible. Yes. And so this is just um, my white sauce. So I usually put it in a real easy container to be able to, um, you know, to mix up. And like I said, I just usually use that, that cashews, nutritional yeast, and also with a different kind of seasoning to really change the flavor. So you're thinking about, you know, what can I use as a base? What can I use to add on um, the other aspect besides, um, you know, putting a sauce, the different types of sauces sometimes will season with a smoked seasoning. So that'll change the flavor mm -hmm. a bit. And there's times when we'll do it more of a creamy base. Um, you can also use, I like tamari personally, mm -hmm. just because of it's gluten free. And then you can use a honey, you can use a sesame mm -hmm. sauce or a sesame oil to give it more of an Asian flavor. Yeah. So you can just change it up. You can make it more Mediterranean like we showed with those uh, having hummus. Um, another one that I love having on stock is, um, <clears throat> these are organic olives. Mm -hmm. I think Emma and I could just sit and eat, eat all the whole jar of olives. <laughs> yeah, we just love, love, love olives. Um, <clears throat> And then other substitution is um, like coconut milk. Instead of using a, um, a regular cow's milk, you can really use mm -hmm. this a lot for different kinds of creamy sauces. Mm -hmm. And um, we like curry mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, this is a balsamic vinegar, and that's great just to put directly, drizzle it on top of um, artichokes mm -hmm. or just any of the roast veggies that we showed I'll make that a lot with my base of just salt and balsamic and a little bit of honey do that mix <laughs> and put that on my roast veggies is one of my favorite flavors then to add to my salads and then I buy um, bulk nuts so these are walnuts in there to the window <laughs> those are pecans so just getting things bulk and those are actually, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but for me, I'm not buying meat. And so if I'm not spending the money on <clears throat> some of those expensive meats, but I'm getting really quality mm -hmm. proteins, just know that, you know, you can spend the money somewhere. Um, so that's how, you know, often we choose to do it. And then um, as far as sauces, this is a really ready-made one that's easy. It's an organic um, Trader Joe's. Some of you might have a Trader Joe's near you um, <clears throat> for other sauces both for marinating you can make sauces really easily but it just changes up the flavor mm -hmm. a lot and so when Emma's talking about you know having a salad and you're putting in your grains with your um, greens mm -hmm. and your different roasted veggies or fresh veggies <clears throat> I also like to use a sauce of some sort and then a crunch you yes. know I like to have um, Personally, I like to use like nuts to add that on for a crunch. Or the roasted chickpeas. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is another one that we use a fair amount too. It's from Trader Joe's as well. And it's an everything bagel. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's so yummy. And it actually still gives that extra little crunch on your as salad. well. Yeah. 
And then we made the ingredients that I have in my kitchen. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> that's great. That's so great. Um, so this is a, a yummy um, little dessert that we made with just mm -hmm. banana, the juice plus drink, chocolate mix, um, oh, some meal. oats, and then grated some raw, just um, cacao, just chocolate with it. So that was really yummy. And then I think we've touched most everything. So I'm gonna let Emma share about these last two things. And I think we're good and we can open for questions yeah. if you have any questions. I think the last thing we made these last night was one of my phases to make um, chia puddings. So you just do raw chia seeds and either uh, nut milk or coconut milk and then let them sit overnight and absorbs it all. And then this is actually a matcha green tea chia up. pudding. Um, so it has a little bit of caffeine for your morning if that's your big caffeine morning person. And then it has all of your fruits and veggies and a bunch of omegas with the chia seeds. And this is a chocolate made with the chocolate juice plus powder and a coconut milk. Yeah, so yummy. So like I said, selfishly, our dinner's done. And you guys maybe be getting hungry about right now, but um, any questions or comments or things that you want to ask or say before we um, say goodbye and thank you and yeah, yeah appreciate you joining us. <clears throat> Are you inspired to eat more plant foods? Are you, do you know that there's- I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 you know, there's some options now, Var lots of variety. That's great. Well, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to ask us other questions. We can send you information. We can also um, share with you, like I said, these different recipes mm -hmm. as well. And just really excited to continue to help in this whole mm -hmm. education, especially as this new one's coming into the family soon. Um, any day you can be praying for any day for Jasper to yes. make his way known. And um, it's going to enter into lots of love and lots of good food. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you all yes. so much for joining us today. Bless thank you. you. Yes, thank you're you. You're Love ya. Bye. 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 Emma, if you have a chance um, to get a hold of some seaweed after you give birth, it's really good. That and coconut water, especially yeah. if you end up with any sort of like I did with the epidural draining the yeah. spinal fluid or anything like that. So really good stuff. Yeah. Stay mm -hmm. very hydrated and sleep when they sleep. <laughs> Try to. <laughs>